Hey, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And one of the things I love to do is create photorealistic uh, things inside of Photoshop. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create lightning. So we're going to have bolts of lightning coming out of the sky. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun and you can really use this to electrify your images. So uh, have fun with this. And also just to let you know, I also have this as a written tutorial on photoshopcafe.com and I'll just include the link for you. So I'll see you at the cafe. So here we have a picture of a cemetery that I got from uh, Dollar Photo Club, which is Fatolia, which is now part of Adobe Stock. And what we're going to do is make this scene a little bit more creepy by adding some lightning, give that kind of Dracula feel to it. So what we're going to do is create a new layer. And then we're going to set it up now to create some lightning. So what I'm going to do is hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors to white and black. Then we're going to grab the gradient tool. Now go up here and make sure the gradient is set to the first option. And this is foreground to background. Now you want to make sure it's set to linear. And all these other settings are just fine. Don't worry about those too much. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this from about a mm, quarter of the way in to about a quarter of the way across diagonally. Maybe a little bit more. And uh, experiment with some different ones. Once you see how this effect comes into place, you can start to experiment with different types of gradients and you'll see the different types of results you're going to get from those. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Filter. And now we're going to go down to the Render. And under Render, we're going to choose Difference Clouds. So Difference Clouds are what we're looking for. So we're just going to click and now you're going to see this really trippy looking thing. So what we want to do now is we're going to inverse this. And to inverse it, we're going to hit Control i on Windows. And that'd be Command-I on Mac, I for inverse. And now you can start to see there's a little bit of kind of electric kind of a glow going on in here. So this is looking cool. So what we want to do, though, is we're going to start to bring this out a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is to use levels. So now you can go up under Image Adjustments, Levels, or you can simply hit the keyboard shortcut, Control-L or Command L on Mac. So let's just go up under here. We're going to use Image Adjustments and we're going to choose Levels. So there we go. Now we don't want to do this as an adjustment layer. We want to do this as a Levels Adjustment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag these in. So what we're trying to do is you can see here there's this lightning in the middle and we really want that to come out. So we're going to go down here and this is going to plug up all the blacks. Now if you take it all the way you're going to get more of a kind of a cracking fractal which is great for doing cracks in concrete and stuff. But I want to have a little bit of a glow around there so it kind of looks a little bit electric. So there we go. You can kind of see that. And maybe bring it back a little bit more. So notice the more you go back the more of a kind of a fractal glow that's going to go in there. And this is kind of cool because it makes it look like it's sort of going through clouds and things to give it this neat effect. So now we're just going to click OK. So what we want to do now is we're going to clean it up. And I'm just going to grab a black brush. So I'm just going to hit the B for the brush tool. And I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to turn on a hard edge brush. Make sure hardness is all the way up and we can just play around with the size. Make sure that's set to black and all you're going to simply do will make sure pressure sensitivity is turned off. Opacity is all the way up to 100. So is flow and we're just going to just paint over that. There we go. So what we're essentially doing is just creating this nice lightning bolt. So let's just go in here, clean that up a little bit. Now you could use a soft edge brush if you're not liking the results you're getting here from the hard edge brush here it could start to get a little bit weird around there so we could soften it up a little bit let's go here let me just bring the hardness down and you can use the left and right bracket keys to uh, play around and change the brush size so let's just go up here I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more and right now I'm using a Wacom Cintiq um, you could also be using the Intuitus or you could be doing this with a mouse if you wanted, although a graphics tablet is a lot easier to use and I definitely guarantee, um, recommend that you would use a graphics tablet. It's really going to help you. So there we go. We've got one bolt of lightning. So what can we do with this bolt of lightning? Well, let's have a look. We're going to change the blend mode to an overlay blend mode. It doesn't work too well. So let's try something like lighten maybe. How does this look with lighten? And there we go. Put that into lighten mode and everything is looking good. So I'm going to resize this. I'm going to hit Control T. That would be Command T on Mac. And I'm just going to go down and just pull this down a little bit. And I'm going to scale it and maybe even rotate it. 
and just kind of go, we're going to have it like hitting right here onto that cross. So what I'm doing is I'm doing this thick because if you actually look at lightning and one of the things I do recommend doing is really looking at reference images. And by that, I mean, go and look at photographs of real lightning. And one of the things I've found is they tend to have the center here, this kind of uh, branch or the trunk, like a tree if it was, and then those little branches tend to come off them. So I'm just gonna apply this right now. And what I'm gonna do is just my brush here, grab my brush again, I'm just gonna paint that out. And notice that the blend mode with the black, it just takes it right out there. So we could kind of have it hitting a little bit like that, it's pretty neat. Because generally speaking, let me go up there a little bit more. That'll kind of work because lightning generally hits objects and metal objects work really well. They tend to draw or attract lightning. All right, so that's the main branch. What we want to do is we're going to do some more. So let's just create a new layer and we're just going to repeat the steps. We're just going to take this. Maybe we'll go this way this time. And we're going to go filter. We're going to go to the render and we're just going to go to the, cl uh, the difference clouds again. And if you have trouble following this, we're just going to invert it and hit levels. Same thing we did before. If you have trouble following this, just go to photoshopcafe.com and I'll actually put a link here at the bottom too so you can see we've also got a written version of this tutorial. So it might be easier for you to follow along step by step. But watch this video all the way through first, even if you are going to do that. And we're just going to go there and now we're just going to hit the brush. Now I could put this into the light and blending mode, but I'm going to start here because it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing when I'm just painting black on white. Now I'm going to probably recycle this and get a lot of money's worth out of this particular one. You'll see what I mean in a second. Because you don't have to keep recreating things. One of the things I love about Photoshop is the fact that things can be reused so often and it works great. So what we want to do now is I'm just going to put now this into overlay blending mode. No, sorry, I meant a lighten blending mode. There we go. And then I'm just going to hit Control J to make a copy of this, and then I'm going to hide it. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping this one here as my little reference, and I'll even call it just uh, Source. So now we're going to be spawning off different ones out of this Source. We're going to keep reusing it. So I'm going to grab the Move tool and hit Control or Command T, and now we're going to be using that for creating smaller uh, branches of lightning. So we can have these coming off in different ways. So maybe we're going to have a branch come off, oh, so say like this. And um, and of course, we can clean that up with the brush. Just grab the brush here and we can drop that down a little bit. So there's a little branch coming off there. That looks great. Um, maybe move it around a little bit. And sometimes you'll, you'll just kind of play around with these to get them looking right. And I'm going to hit Control J. I'm going to copy this and hit Control T or Command T once again for free transform and you can usually um, get you know some good mileage out of these you can recreate these notice what we're doing or the other thing is I can just option drag and copy out a copy of it and by doing that I can actually scale these down now and I can start to make you know little branches so what I'm trying to do is just reuse that so we've got a couple of those let's go back to our source now and I'm just gonna hit control J or command J to make a copy and this time we're going to do something different with this copy. Let's make this one smaller, bring it down a little bit, maybe have this one come out as a little branch here, like that. And, um, you know, once again, we can go in with the brush here, hit the B for brush tool, and we can break this up a little bit. So it kind of looks like that. And um, hit the move tool. Hit the option key once again copy it out and um, and I think you're starting to get the idea I'm not gonna get too um, you know spend too much time just creating these little branches because essentially this is all I'm doing now from this point on all I'm doing is just I'm just making little branches and sometimes I'll go here I'll right click and then I'll might rotate at 90 degrees or flip horizontal and see how you can start to get different shapes out of the uh, out of the same lightning and we can kind of drop these down a little bit and uh, let's just do that I'm just gonna grab one more here let's rotate it a little bit and um, yeah I think you're starting to get the idea so essentially what we're gonna do is just keep doing this over and over again until uh, we get exactly the type of lightning effect we're looking for and you know sometimes the more time you spend on it the better kind of result you're gonna get 
So I'm just going to kind of stop here creating the lightning because I, I know you get the idea. Now, if I'm doing, you know, a piece that I'm working on, I might spend a little bit more time and actually create four or five different branches with the gradient. And then it's going to give me a little bit more variety to work with. But you know what? For now, this is good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these and I'm just going to group them together. I'm going to hit Control G and put them all inside a group. Now I'm going to drag that. Um, let's grab these two and we're also going to put those inside the group. So let's just grab them and oops, hit cancel there. And I'm just going to drag these into the group. So they're all going to be together. There we go. And uh, we can do that. Now the reason I'm putting them into a group because this way if I want to do something like apply a layer style or something, it's now going to apply to all the layers. You could have flattened it as well, but this gives you the flexibility to move things around a little bit if you want to change it later. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to apply some color to this lightning. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. What we're going to do, since we put it into a group, there's a couple of things we're going to need to do. We're going to go down here and we're going to apply a layer style to this entire group. So we're going to go down and we're going to choose a color overlay. So now we're in the color overlay. Make sure blend mode is set to color and choose a color. So maybe we could go here, maybe give it a little bit more of a, a purpley kind of a color and click OK. Now, one of the problems we see here and um, what you see is we've got our lightning is colored, but so is the boundaries of our um, of our images. So we want to show just the lightning and not anything else. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go into the blending options and this is the advanced blend modes. And then what we're going to do is go up here and we're going to change the blend mode of all of these. This is our master blend mode to the screen blend mode. All right, not a lot's happening right now. It looks pretty much the same, right? So what we're going to do now is click this option, Blend Interior Effects as a group. And there we go. So now had you tried this, you know, we could try different blend modes like Lightning. Lightning will work. But, um, you know, some of these other ones are still going to show uh, that area around there. See that? So what you want to be doing is playing in this set here. These are the Lightning Blend Modes or the Lighter Modes, these ones. So all of these are going to give you a different result. If you go to any of these other ones, you're going to get this kind of weird result. So stay in this group here. So it could be lighten. Looks good. It could be screen. Just play around with different ones and see which one's kind of giving you the effect you want. Color dodge is looking a little too weird down the bottom. Same with linear dodge. But light and color is actually working quite well as well. But I kind of like the screen. So we're going to go to screen mode. Let's go back to our color overlay here. And what we're going to do is just take the opacity down a little bit. So what we're doing is just applying a little bit of color. There we go. So it's a little bit more subtle. And maybe give it a little bit more back into that blues. There we go. And that looks a little bit more realistic. So there we go. We've created this colored lightning right there. But one of the things that's really missing is I'd like to see a little bit more of that color here in the sky. And so we can kind of create this nice effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer and I'm going to grab our eyedropper and with the eyedropper, go over here and select some of that color. So there we go. We've got that nice color. Now we're going to go up to our gradient tool and with our gradient, we're going to grab the second option, which is going to be color to transparent or foreground to transparent. And then we're just going to click and drag down. So notice we've created this effect. It's not done yet. We're going to change this into color blend mode. There we go. And so if we look at this before and after, we can see we're starting to apply that color. Now we can drop that opacity down a little bit and just apply just as much as we want. So there we go. So if we look at this now, here's before and here's after we've created this cool effect. Now there's one other thing we could do if we really wanted to enhance it in some of these other brighter areas. Let's just go in and create another layer. Yes, yet another layer, and we're going to fill it with that foreground color. Now we're going to set this to color blend mode, and now it's going to make everything color. But now we just want to apply it in certain areas. So once again, we're going to go to our effects. We're going to grab blending options, and we're going to go into our advanced blending options. Now, if we look at some of these, look at this area here. If we want to just make this layer go like that, we can pull this across. And notice what's happening here. If we look at this option here, we turn the preview on and off. You can see what we're doing is we're allowing this to come through in certain areas, just in the highlights. So I'm going to hit the Alt key or the Option key, and I'm just going to split this option here and pull it down to just about where we want it. 
And notice here, you can see we've got this is going all the way in. Let's drag it back up again. And just watch some of these highlight areas. See these highlight areas are just starting to get some of that color in there. So you can just play around with it exactly where you want it to come in. And just play around with these two sliders and you can allow some of that color in there. So I'm just going to click OK and show you what we've done. So if we go back here and turn this on, notice it's not going across everything. It's just going into these areas. And of course, we can drop this opacity down and just play around for a little bit. So we've got some of this color coming into the highlights. So there we go, before and after, very subtle. We've got that color in the sky now, and we've got our lightning. So here's our effect before, and here's our effect afterwards. So, you know, once again, you can keep playing around and expanding this and doing more stuff with it. But I'm going to stop about here because I think you've got the general idea of how it should be done. So um, head over to photoshopcafe.com for a lot more tutorials. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel here, and I'm going to be adding new techniques and new Photoshop tips and, and tutorials all the time on a regular basis. So until then, I'll see you at the cafe. That's photoshopcafe.com. If you like this, drop a like and also um, add a comment. So I hope you enjoy. And drag, you'll see a line. And then once I release, that gradient there will fill that area. And I can see that by hitting the Alt key or the Option key, you can see there's the gradient we added.